Hello. Do you know what a lattice programmer, a left speaker array, a dead AMD GPU, a Thunderbolt controller, a single arm boom stand microscope, and an external GPU kit have to do with each other? If you guessed an A1297 MacBook Pro, <laughs> bravo, you nailed it. How'd you know? <laughs> uh, anyway, all jokes aside, uh, this video today is about the absurd lengths I went to for this A1297 MacBook Pro. Um, is this practical? No, not at all. It's 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 a complete waste of time, really. A, a total waste of this is just not a good idea. Like there's no. So long story short, iBoff has made this kit, the XGPU project, um, and they make this kit for uh, a couple different Macs, some iMacs, uh, a couple MacBook Pros. Um, and possibly a couple other models that I, I just aren't in my mind. But in any case, um, this kit is uh, essentially a solder-in uh, upgrade kit for the, uh, well, A1297 and A1286, uh, A1286 MacBook Pro. Um, this makes a lot more sense to do in an A1286. Uh, it's a slightly newer computer. Uh, has USB 3.0. I used to own an A1286, but I recently recycled it I'm like an idiot. Um, however, I will say that the A1297 is a really good machine in its own right. Um, part of it, you know, part of its greatness uh, is due to its massive and awesome speakers. Uh, you know, this uh, <laughs> this one is blown. But uh, the reason why I have all this out here today is to explain to you just how much work went into this machine. So there is a, a video uh, clip coming up where I, I kind of explain what was done internally. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to have uh, taken you along with me for the entire installation process on this project. But as you can see, it's quite involved, quite in depth and took me quite a long time to do. Just want to say that uh, there will be more content like this in the future. I am still moving. But when we come back, hopefully I will have something for the trinocular port in that microscope and I will be able to show you the nitty gritty details of what I'm doing uh, when I'm doing things like this. So we've got the iBoff Nevbolt installed. So what this is, is a replacement uh, breakout board for the aged Thunderbolt chip on this MacBook Pro. You might wonder why replace Thunderbolt? Well, we can extract the lanes and put them to this breakout board I have here that goes inside where the optical drive bay does. So the nev bolt specifically here, this feeds this NVMe drive slot. So now we've got a native 4X NVMe drive in this older um, A1297 MacBook. Uh, so that's pretty sweet. But beyond that, you might have noticed this X8 connector here. Um, so this is where the X Whistler comes in. So these MacBook Pros shipped with faulty GPU dies. Um, it's part of the inherent design of the GPU. There's nothing you can do to correct it. Even putting on replacements, they will all eventually share the same fate of death. Um, there is no fixing it. So with that said, these can be replaced with X Whistler uh, IBOF chips or interposers, if you will. And that allows us to extract the 8x lane or 8x worth of PCI Express connectivity that is previously used by this GPU die to two more connectors, which can feed this X8 slot on this optical drive uh, install. So uh, those all connect down here, right? We have first port, second port, and NVMe, which is the two connectors on this board uh, for the X Whistler and the one connector from the Nev Bolt, respectively. Uh, so NVMe goes to uh, Nevbolt, and then port 1 and port 2 go to these two connectors here on the distribution board. Um, you also can extract the uh, SATA uh, from the optical drive bay, oops, as I drop it here, from the optical drive bay uh, connector, and then get yourself another SATA, SATA SSD installed in here as well, on top of the one that, of course, can natively be installed in the chassis. Uh, so in order to do this installation, obviously there was the BGA work that had to go into the X Whistler and the IBOF, uh, as these are BGA package chips. 
many balls in a tight grid array that need to be aligned perfectly with the pads below. So I haven't tested it to know if what I've done actually works yet, but with uh, the testing I can do with my multimeter, it seems like it should work. Uh, so I guess next thing we gotta do is slap this in the machine and see if that's true. All right, so reassembly has been completed. Okay. So the way this works, normally you would have this in some sort of enclosure. I just have it sprawled across the desk for testing purposes, but we turn on our power supply. There's a sense wire for when the system turns on, 24 pin SATA and uh, extra GPU power plugged into the GPU. And then we have this little breakout to plug into the MacBook. So this is the fun part. I believe, yeah, we just line it up in the optical drive bay press it in and now we are ready to use the GPU all right so the difference being this time when we go to check out our system report system information and we go down to graphics as you can see AMD Radeon RX 580 PCI Express 8x connectivity so this GPU is now running on this machine. Now I have to hook up a display for you to see uh, an accelerated display out, but I think that's good enough for this video. So yeah, turns out this was a complete success. <laughs> awesome. Um, this has been a really cool project. Um, aside from the actual installation, um, there were other additional things that needed to be done. As you can see over here, right under this IPEX connector, these little white, um, surface mount components here. These are actually inductors. They replace the uh, stock installed capacitors that go here. So there's about 32 uh, of these little guys that you also need to put in place. Obviously there's this disgusting three volt uh, wire bridge here for the uh, board here. Um, as gross as this is, it's entirely necessary to power the NVMe. Uh, and then also there's a reset line that I have to use a jumper wire uh, to bodge. And it comes down over here and connects to uh, PL Reset L, I believe is the name of that test point. Uh, and then also I need to ground part of the GMUX, or sorry, uh, connect part of the GMUX IC to that same point, uh, PL Reset L. So for that, I've simply used this test point down here and connected both wires to it. Um, not sure if that will end up working, but again, we have, haven't even powered this thing on yet. There's also this small bridge that needs to happen as well. Um, honestly, I couldn't remember exactly. It's part of the graphics reset circuitry, but it needs to be sent to ground as well. Couldn't tell you what it is off the top of my head, but that little bodge has to go in as well. And uh, other than that, that, oh, and of course all the GPU inductors, right? So every PCI Express decoupling capacitor uh, has to be replaced with an inductor because decoupling will now happen um, on the connections here, uh, whether it be the NVMe drive you install or whatever you put into the X8. Every, uh, every device that you plug in through a desktop connection has its own decoupling capacitors, and if you double up on those, your signal basically goes to shit. So all of these little inductors that don't quite line up straight, all of those had to be put on. Uh, and there's even more on the other side. So uh, I wouldn't say it's a beginner install at all, but big project. Again, we don't even know if it works yet. Let's figure that out. We got a brand new chassis uh, for it. Well, not a new chassis, obviously, but this is the old chassis, uh, which, you know, I've modded and, and it's, it's in pretty rough shape, but I've got a brand new chassis to swap all of these components minus obviously the optical drive into. Uh, although I did omit the lattice programming uh, part of, of this section. So these wires, uh, I would not recommend trying to use for this. Um, this was awful. Uh, attaching these wires sucked because they are um, not solid core. They are multi-threaded uh, wires, which makes them really tough to attach to the JTAG points that you need to attach to in the MacBook Pro to reprogram the uh, GPU MUX which is a, status lattice, uh, a standard lattice chip uh, FPGA that you can reprogram, which is thanks to DOS Dude's work, and that's how this machine is able to uh, work in this condition. Uh, so yeah, a uh, huge shout out to DOS Dude and all the work he did for uh, this particular um, <clears throat> uh, DMUX firmware that I'm using. And honestly, if it wasn't for his uh, install of this iBoff kit, I probably would have been lost a couple times uh, during my own install. So. 
huge shout out to him for, for doing that groundwork as well. I would like to point out something that I didn't mention uh, in, in my other video clips was that uh, this speaker array is in the way of the IBOF distribution board. However, in this particular section here, that's where it conflicts with the PCI Express slot. I did, no I did notice this before, but there is an open hole on this chamber. Um, so this must be the, you know, the exit for the subs and whatnot. Um, so the port, I should say. So anyway, what you have to do is mark it with a Sharpie. That's what I did anyway. And then I uh, chopped it out with some flush cutters. It does eventually snap and leave a pretty clean cut. So if I did another one, say this way, I'm just gonna cut this so you can get an idea of what's possible. It did end up being basically like this. So I'd snap it, right? And then I'd chop that out, pull away the piece, and then there you go. Now you melt this open hole with the soldering iron at 230C and uh, you'd be good to go. Uh, as you can see, it's on and working. I'm actually running Mac OS Sonoma on this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd recommend that or not, but uh, it is possible to use the latest operating system on this machine. But where it's really held back is its old IO. All of the ports on the machine are quite old, right? All we have is three USB type A, some headphone jacks um, or line in as well. Uh, the now completely disabled mini display port because there's no Thunderbolt and obviously with the dead GPU, there's no external display out. Thunderbolt, uh, or sorry, Firewire 800, which is mm, super useful and uh, full size gigabit ethernet. And then of course your MagSafe. So three USB ports is nice, but unfortunately them being USB 2 is not nice and pretty much every other port on the machine other than the charger is pretty much worthless for modern use. So you know what, for what it is, I, I like to think of this as my as my theater computer, right? It's nice to watch movies on in bed. Uh, that's pretty much what I like about it is that it's got kick-ass speakers, a decent enough screen, and um, you know, other than that, it's, it's a big chonking machine, which is awesome. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend going through the amount of pain that I went through, however, it is pretty cool now that it is done and working. And like I said, you know, being able to hook up an external GPU to this thing, or, you know, pretty much anything. You could put a 10 gigabit NIC in it. Uh, you could put a USB 3 extension card into it if you like. Um, you know, the options are there. The problem is, is that a lot of these solutions are obviously going to practically require you to dock the machine. And then it's not quite a laptop anymore. It's a desktop. And to put in this much effort to you know, make this thing into a, you know, dockable laptop. Is it really practical to run a Sandy Bridge based quad core as a desktop? Not really, not in modern day, uh, you know, not in the modern day architecture. So unfortunately, like I said, this machine is still held back from its age, despite the amount of work that the community has put into it. But uh, I, I think at the end of the day, this was a really awesome project. My microscope uh, is was essential. Um, my hot air station, which is this little binky thing that is probably just out of frame here, but let's see if I can, yeah. Eh, this arm is in the way. That, see that yellow striped thing? Yeah. Anyway, this is my hot air station. I've learned that that's woefully inadequate for working on these multi-layer boards, uh, but it was just adequate enough to get this job done, so. Uh, I'd recommend you get something better than I did. And uh, my old trusty, uh, what is this thing? Uh, TS-100 soldering iron with uh, multiple hacko tips has been invaluable. I thought it was cool. I'm happy with it. And uh, I just wanted to share that this is what I've been up to lately. So uh, obviously this, this, a lot of this is gonna have to start to get taken away as my move is approaching ever quicker. Uh, I definitely have my priorities in order. Definitely not goofing off fixing ancient MacBooks that nobody cares about while I should be packing my life into boxes. Anyway, thank you again and have a good one.